Keto, ketogenic, ketosis, what does that all mean? Is it just a fad or is it something good and natural that we can do long term? Stay tuned and I'll explain the basics. Hey, I'm Dr. Stan Ekberg with Wellness for Life and by subscribing to our channel, you will learn everything that you need to know to master true health. Keto, ketogenic, ketosis, there's nothing strange about it. Your body has a few basic resources for fuel. And one is carbohydrate, which results in blood sugar, and another is fat that it can burn for fuel. Proteins can be used for fuel, but they're primarily building blocks. So fat or carbohydrate, that's what we have to burn for fuel. So the problem today is that people eat way, 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 way too much carbohydrate, which creates insulin responses and insulin resistance and diabetes and inflammation and obesity. So to counteract that, we have energy from fats. And now we can use different amounts of fat versus carbohydrate. If we use very, very low amount of carbohydrate, the body gets more dependent on fat. It gets better at burning the fat. Now the brain uses primarily glucose, which comes from carbohydrate, also known as blood sugar. But if the blood sugar uh, starts running a little bit low, then the brain learns to depend on what's called ketone bodies. And ketone bodies are a byproduct of fat metabolism. So if you eat a lot of carbohydrates, then your body doesn't have to rely on fat so much, so it kind of forgets how to use the fat. And the reason that the carbs, the blood sugar, gets burned first is that blood sugar needs to be maintained within a very, very narrow band. A little bit too much is toxic, a little bit uh, too low is also detrimental. So the brain, the body has all these defense mechanisms to keep it within a very narrow range. That's why carbs get burned first. But if we start cutting back on the carbs now, the brain has to start depending on fat and it upregulates, it changes the receptors, it changes the metabolic pathways, it changes the enzymes so it can utilize the fat more efficiently. And this can be very, very effective if you are having trouble with insulin resistance or stubborn weight. This idea has been around for a very, very long time because before they had all these drugs for everything and people sought natural solutions, uh, one of the main problems that they started addressing with diet was kids with epilepsy. And they found that they had about a 95% recovery or remission or dramatic improvement if they put these kids on an extremely high fat diet. So while you're cutting down the carbohydrates, way, way, way down to less than 5% of, of calories and having almost all the rest of it from fat, these kids' brains did remarkably better. So sugar is very toxic for the brain. So it's not just about the weight and, and weight loss and so forth. It's about your overall health. Ketosis is a natural response from the body during starvation. And historically, presumably during thousands or millions of years, uh, there has been periods of starvation. And during that time, there's very, very little blood sugar available. And for probably months at a time, the body has relied on fat and it has produced ketones. And during those times, the brain relies primarily on ketone bodies for energy. So ketosis is a very natural thing. And during starvation, something else happens also that uh, is very beneficial. There's something called autophagy, which means that the body gets better at cleaning up. It gets better because it starts kind of cannibalizing itself to get resources for energy. It starts breaking down fat, which most people would think is good, and it starts breaking down protein, which most people think is not so good. 
but at the same time, it improves not just the breakdown, but it improves the cleanup. It improves the ability to recycle and clean out waste products. So it's an excellent detoxification method. And also what starvation does is it increases dramatically your amount of human growth hormone, which is a rejuvenating, rebuilding hormone. So the body has these different mechanisms. It gets better at cleaning up when it has to break things down, but it also produces more growth hormone so it can rebuild cells better and gets more economical with the body's resources. So there's some debate whether this is a good thing for long term or if it's damaging overall. What some people are afraid of is what medical doctors talk about called diabetic ketoacidosis. That's a pathological state in diabetes when you have absolutely no ability to use your blood sugar. Your blood sugar goes really high, but there's no way to get it out of the blood and into the cells. Now you are at the most extreme level of starvation because there's nothing coming into the cells. And in these situations, the acidity from the ketosis goes up dramatically. But we're talking about something that can't happen in a healthy person. If you have any insulin and any ability to use that blood sugar, at all, then your ketones are never going to get to that level. So a diabetic that has gotten to that point, it has, he has hundreds or thousands of times the ketones that a normal healthy person could ever get to no matter how hard they tried. And if we look at populations like maybe the Eskimos, they are relying for very long periods of time throughout the year on primarily protein and fat. And those people, those populations, will probably run six months at a time on ketone metabolism and they have no ill effects. So what's more important is to understand, we're going to cover more in a series on nutrition, it's the quality of the food. It's not just that you want to look at how much fat and how much carbs. We want to look at do the fats have, are they, are they a whole food? Are they come from a healthy animal? because then they have plenty of nutrition for your body to support it. And some people think, oh, well, I have to go low carb, so they start putting in a bunch of artificial sweeteners like aspartame and acesulfame and all that. Now you're poisoning your body. There's nothing good about that at all. So we have to keep understanding that even though we're making these changes, it's still about eating whole, natural, healthy food that comes from nature in a as unspoiled, as unprocessed state as possible. So is this for everybody? I think everyone can benefit from doing it from time to time. Does everyone need to do it? Probably not. I certainly advocate low carbs for most people because as a population, 99% of us eat way, way, way too many carbs. But it doesn't mean that everyone has to go into ketosis. It's not going to hurt you, but I don't think you need to. So the people who really, really could benefit from this are people who have trouble losing weight, who know that they're insulin resistant, who are diabetic or borderline diabetic. These people need to dramatically transform their metabolism. They need to get a little bit more extreme to get those, those desired results. If you have any experience with this, if you have any questions, if you have any challenges, let me know and I'll be more than happy to try to address those. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave your comments below. Thank you.